Time now for Inside Slants. Gina Mizell actually covers the Beavers for the Oregonian and joins us now. Gina, great having you on the show. You heard what the coaches had to say about the communication, but what's it like between the staffs right now? Well, I mean, you heard it with Gary Anderson that really this game is about the kids and about the players, and that's what he opened his Monday press conference with. But, of course, he fielded a lot of questions about his time at Utah, his relationship with Kyle Whittingham, and it was much the same when we talked to defensive coordinator Kalani Sataki today. He, he said it's about the players, but still was very complimentary of Kyle Whittingham and that staff because Whittingham obviously had a huge influence not just on Gary Anderson, but on Kalani Sataki, on Eliza Tuiaki, the linebackers coach here at Oregon State. And so, yeah, it's, it's an interesting subplot between uh, two teams that this doesn't look like a great game on paper, but there's a lot of storylines heading into this game just because of all the connections between the coaching staffs. Gina, based off of that familiarity between the two staffs, how do you think it actually affects what we're going to see actually on the football field? Yeah, it's interesting just because a lot of what Gary Anderson does, a lot of what Kalani Sataki does uh, stems from their times with Kyle Whittingham. And there are a lot of similar philosophies, a lot of similar strategies, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And I asked Sataki today, hey, is, is Dave Baldwin, the offensive coordinator, in your ear trying to learn about personnel or tendencies? And he said, well, not too much. you got to go through your normal film study and kind of approach this as a normal game. But certainly it's going to be interesting to watch kind of the chess match between these two staffs just because the familiarity is unavoidable. They're, they know these, they, each other extremely well, and so um, that'll be interesting to watch on Saturday. Gina, I want to key in on that quarterback spot. We saw Nick Mitchell get mm -hmm. the start last week. Seth Collins had been the starter. Marcus McMarion was also in the fold at some point, at least early in the season, offseason, and in that opening game. Make sense of what we're seeing at that spot and what we're going to see. It's interesting just to see how this offense is trying to evolve and trying to di diversify itself with these two quarterbacks. I mean, Seth Collins, if you look at his the first half of his season, you could put together a heck of a highlight reel with his athleticism. He's ripped off some great runs. He's actually sh shown some great touch and some great arm strength on the deep balls, but he just hasn't been very consistent with the intermediate passing game and hasn't been able to sustain drives. And you look at Nick Mitchell and his numbers weren't great against Colorado. He was only 9 of 24, but uh, Gary Anderson talked about a lot of drops by the wide receivers and you kind of just look at the way he throws the football and it's a little bit more of a catchable ball and I think they can call some different things when he's in the ball game so the plan is to still play both of them for the rest of the season or at least in the immediate future they think they can do two different things with with different quarterbacks and kind of cater to their skill set Anderson was key to say that um, he's not going to turn Seth Collins into an option quarterback that's going to run the ball 25 times per game but I think they like what each of them can do in different situations so it'd be very interesting to see how they're both used moving forward. Uh, Gina, I know they only gave up 17 points to Colorado, but this is a team that's had some issues keeping teams off the scoreboard. They gave up at least 42 points in those other three conference losses. So in your mind, what's been the biggest problem on the field? Well, I think that maybe the biggest change or the biggest difference that we've seen is that guys are just actually playing their assignments and doing what Kalani Sataki and this defensive staff have asked them to do. I mean, against Arizona and in the first half against Washington State and then kind of down the stretch against Stanford, we saw a lot of blown assignments, a lot of busted coverages, a lot of missed tackles and just guys not participating in the right technique or, or doing what this coaching staff is asking to do in this specific type of defense. Again, we, a lot's been made of the change in offense for Oregon State but they're running a different defense now with Sataki and company. So um, maybe what worked under the previous staff isn't going to work in, in this system. So I think guys are, are starting to buy in and they're starting to kind of get, get the hang of what's going on and it's starting to click a little bit more for this defense. But um, against Devontae Booker, obviously a great running back, and Travis Wilson, who's coming off a rough game but is a very experienced quarterback, we'll see how they do in Salt Lake City on Saturday. We figured heading into the season that this was going to be a rebuilding process. Where is this at right now? Well, it's tough right now. I mean, Gary Anderson is no stranger to rebuilding programs. He did the same thing at Utah State a few years ago. And, and I mean, you could say that perhaps that program was an even worse state than Oregon State is right now. But, um, you know, you look at the fact that a true freshman or a redshirt freshman is, is playing a quarterback right now. Um, you look at the nine starters that need to re be replaced on defense, the two different schemes that we've mentioned. Um, and then you just look at the current landscape in the Pac-12. It's tough to be a rebuilding program right now. I mean, with the way that the Pac-12 
it currently is, the depth in this league, the talent in this league. I think it's going to take a little bit of time for Gary Anderson, but I think the staff realized that. But certainly it's, it's not fun for the coaches. It's not fun for the players right now. But Anderson said after the Colorado game that, hey, when this thing's finally rolling, we're going to look back on this time and laugh and smile and say, remember when it was really tough. So um, they're trying to stay as positive as they, as they can. They're um, obviously expecting a lot more out of these players. And Gary Anderson hasn't shied away from being tough on these guys. But I think everybody understands that it's a process in Corvallis right now. Yeah, we've seen a lot of that optimism from Gary Anderson on the drive Wednesday nights here on Pac-12 Network, just sort of trying to stay positive, continue to teach and stay the course, and hopefully that pays some dividends for them over the next couple of weeks and the next few years for that program. Gina, appreciate you stopping by with us. Thank you so much for the insight. Hey, thanks a lot, Mike. Appreciate it.